Hello, Pedro here. This is a quick rundown on Merge Assemble, a Houdini digital asset for the SOP network to expand the merge operation. At the moment when we merge nodes, we only have the option to change the order of the inputs. But for a while now, express the desire to have the merge to do more than that, at least to cluster the output geo by the input ID, so we can make decisions afterwards based on knowing that things came from dif different uh, sources. Recently, Sander uh, shared on Discord a foundational setup that allows to do just that. So here we have um, HDA with a lot of inputs coming in. And inside this uh, for loop, there's a file shop that imports each input with the OP referencing one by one so that we can process each input individually. And by the end of the loop, everything is merged together. So very clever. Thank you, Sander. And I built on top of, of this idea and have it a lot of bells and whistles. So this is what I'm going to demo. So by default, the asset just creates the index uh, attribute, which is an integer attribute that relates with the input ID. So here I have six geos, and so I get indices that go from zero to five. Right away, this is very useful for the new copy to point in Houdini 18, where basically we can specify an attribute that will be responsible for uh, matching the incoming geometries to be copied with the appropriate template points. So here I have these uh, scattered points with the index attribute that has values from 0 to 5. And so this will make that the geometries that have the same attributes as the points will be copied onto them. So this result is, uh, this, this is a very uh, nice way to work. We don't have to loop anymore over the copy to points like before to do this sort of thing. The only thing is that we still have to create the attribute on each incoming geometry. So basically, um, without the asset, this asset, you still uh, need to come here and create the attribute for each one of them. So here I would have to change this to one and then put this here and change this to two. And this can be cumbersome if you have a lot of, of inputs. So this is what the uh, asset makes it easier to do. Now I have some options here for the index. So let's say I mute the tube. Uh, you notice there are some gaps now on the copy two points. That's because even though the uh, input is empty, the index will still be accounted for. So I have indices here that go from zero to two. Now I can put um, this valid ID and that will force that only inputs with, um, that are not empty will be accounted for. So this way I have continuous uh, sequential indices, 0, 1, 2, 3, without any gaps. So it depends on what you want, what you need. Um, whatever you put in here, it's going to affect the value that goes into name and also group. So let me show that. So name here is basically a string attribute that has as a suffix the index. We can see 0, 1. And if I change this to OP input ID, you see zero two. Same for the group. So the groups basically will be uh, a group per input geometry. So you can see here that since I have um, five geometries that are not empty, I have five groups. This can be a, a you know a bit wasteful because if you have like say twenty inputs, you're gonna have twenty groups. And if you use the index or the name, you can do most things you can do with the groups. So unless your pipeline requires it, I find this wasteful. But still, you can check here that the index is being used by the group suffix. So group 0, group 2. If I change this to valid ID, get group 0, group 1. You can also use the name of the operator on the group. So now this is called group curve 1. And you also have, we also have here this node uh, attribute. This node attribute keeps track of either the full path of the incoming of the input node or just the name. This last one is not very clustering per se, so all of these attributes are the same for all the geometry that comes from the same input. The enumerate is a bit different. It tries to keep track of the original point ID or primitive ID that the input geometry had. So even though everything is merged now, I know that the original ptnum um, of this point, so let's say if I click here and I sort, I know that even though now this point has the ptnum, this ptnum originally it had zero so this allows me to create these two allow me to create relationships between the output geometry and the input geometry 
Okay, let's look at the other options outside of this. Um, here I have this on top, I have this isolate option. And what it does is allows me to quickly filter the geometry. So you, this is going to blast things, but usually one has groups in here. And I thought, well, groups might not be very interesting because each input might have its own groups. So it might, might be more useful to have, let's say, presets for type ID. So let's say I put geometry. So now I only keep polygons, beziers, uh, nerves, and polysoups. Or let's say if I click here on pack frames, now I only keep pack frames, so they are isolated. Or I could do the inverse of this syntax. So I just click invert, and now the pack, pack frames are gone. So quick way to filter out the incoming geometry without having to uh, you know, filter each input individually. On the bottom here, we have execute user subnet. So this is, uh, this is related. If the asset is not black boxed, you can go in and you have your own um, setup in here that will be applied to each input. So in this case, I have the match size so that everything goes into the same size. And I also have uh, these normals being applied to the pig head. Because if you notice, I come out and I execute it. Even though you see the match size being applied, the pig head is black because the rubber toy has normals, but the pig head doesn't. So by the end of it, the pig head will have zero length normals. Not very, uh, not very useful. So here I have the normals being created, and now everything looks okay. Uh, at the bottom we have this report uh, empty IO. What this means is that let's say I mute the tube again, and I middle mouse button. There's a message here in the info that's going to say. This tube input is uh, starting empty and is also ending empty. So this is so we can assess what's happening uh, with our inputs without having to go check one by one to see if they have points individually. You know, I just get a report and that report already informs you about uh, the inputs and what's happening with them. So um, it, something might start empty but may not end empty. So for example, here if I do merge, and I put here, let's say, a box. And I come outside now. It can tell me the tube is starting empty, but it's not ending empty because now it got a box. Also, of course, if I do the filtering, you're going to have a report saying that the tube started empty, but all of these ended empty because they were filtered out. So just a quick way to assess, debug what's going on. Uh, let's look into a way to deal with the uh, unshared attributes. I have here this example where I have uh, the squab and the rubber toy. And usually when we merge two geometries, it's very common to get this warning. There's a mismatch of attributes on the inputs. And so this means in this case, there's attributes that don't match. And for example, the N is present on the rubber toy, but not on the squab. So again, the squab is going to get black. One uh, brute force way that I implemented to deal with this is just basically delete everything that is not shared by all geometries. So if I click on this one, come here, you can see now the normals uh, were deleted. Actually, everything was deleted but the point. And it, for us to get a better assessment of what was deleted, um, we can click here on the report detect the deleted. And now you can see that all of these attributes were deleted. Now. The squab has UVs and the rubber toy has UVs. Why is the why is the UVs being deleted? Well, because this geometry here doesn't have UV. But maybe I don't want to account for it because apparently it's empty. So if I click here, ignore empty, the inputs that are empty won't be accounted for this shared assessment. And so my UVs are back. Now the squab has um has a shop material path, has a shader. But because the rubber toy doesn't getting deleted, if there's any attribute that I want to be sure that is not deleted, I can always put here the uh, here an exception. So I'm going to put here shop, and now the squab gets the shop material path attribute. Of course, it's going to be empty for the rubber toy, but you know, depending on what you're dealing with, it might be more important to keep that than uh, having uh, be ignored. Now, there's um this report can give us uh, extra information. So let me untick here, or let me actually mute the blast. So actually now the, the box is coming in. And let's say all my inputs, let's say I have 20 inputs, 
and all of them are supposed to have UV. So if I don't have UVs by the end of it, something is going on. So, but I don't know uh, which of them are triggering the deletion of UV. So that's why I have these uh, extra options in here. The first one, uh, it states which inputs have the UV. And the second one states which uh, inputs are missing the UV. So now I know the blast is the responsible input for uh, that it's missing UV. So this is uh, also a debug tool, a nice debug tool to assess like if some of the inputs you know, are missing an attribute that all of them should have. Okay, uh, another way to deal with um, merging of geometries and um, you know, uh, conflicts with attributes is to just uh, pack them. So if we uh, pack the geos, uh, basically inside of each packed container, um, the geometries can have whatever attributes they, they, they need. So they don't need to share uh, the attributes with other outside packed geos. So this is a good strategy to, to keep uh, geom the inputs most intact. Um, there's some options here to isolate and to basically decide what's packed and what is not. Let me show in here. So I click here on pack. By default, everything is going to be packed into their own pack geo. So six inputs, six pack geos. But I can use this filter that is similar to this one to say, actually, I just want the geometries to be packed. So now I still get the tube, I still get the tetrahedrons, and I still get the packed fragments that I had before. But now the, the, the rubber toy, the pig head, and the curve are going to be packed into their, into their own pack view. You can also use the name attribute. So for example, um, let's say I put this back into all. I have six packed geos. Uh, this um, shader ball has four packed fragments. And if I click here on name, each of them will have their own pack geo. So now instead of six, I get uh, nine pack geos. So a lot of options in here to deal with this thing without having to, again, uh, cater each input individually. Last thing I want to show is uh, how to create a relationship between the output geometry and the input uh, operator. So by um, coming here and clicking on node and enumerate, let's look into that. So here I have check if attribute exists on the input view. So I can here, does the n attribute exists on the, my, on the input node? And that will be uh, a yes, or actually that will be a no for the pig head, but it will be a yes for the rubber toy. Here I have uh, how to check the translate parameter. So we don't, we can also check parameters for the nodes. So check the translate parameter on both. So the squab has minus 2.3 and 0.5, and the rubber toy has zero. If I come here and I go to the translate, you can see that here I have the translate of the squab, and here I have the translate of the rubber toy. And lastly, um, let me click here on execute user subnet. So these are being distorted inside. And here I can even you know, get the point, the original uh, key attribute, the original point position of the geometry by using the node and the result of the enumerate ID. So this is giving me the point position of the input. So if I come here and I do this, basically I recover the point positions that they had on the input operators. So this is it. I hope uh, you find some of these things useful. Uh, of course, they're, they're not something maybe sometimes for everyday things, but there's definitely uh, sometimes some tasks that require to do this kind of process. And well, let me know your, your feedback.